at the risk of being pedantic, there's a need to labor this question that's been asked over these last days and maybe even will continue to be asked. And that is, where are we when the three levels of life, existence, movement, in other words, the level of cause and effect, the opposites, the level of spirit, the occult, the level of oneness, merge seamlessly in our life and we find ourselves in a state of intense presence. We know this is a state of such it and under, but how do we know we're there? And since really such it and under is a state, uh, it's not really a state and a place in, in terms of the absolute so how do we know? And because it's not a state or a place, it seems that the only way we can glean this is by perhaps recognizing what's not present in our life in this state that was there before. And this is, becomes very clear for us, very clear. So there are several stories told on Tuesday and they bear repeating even though they're old, old stories because they do make it very clear for us. And the first story is that story of the Buddha uh, when he was walking down the road with his uh, closest disciple Ananda and uh, coming the other way was a man who was obviously impelled to address the Buddha and uh, say to the Buddha, God is great, there is nothing but God, God is everywhere. And the Buddha fixed him with a gaze and said, you stupid man, of course there's no God. And this poor man was shattered. So he went staggering down the road. Well, they walked on a little farther and another man was coming the other way who also was impelled to address the Buddha and he very emphatically said, there's no God. I'm an atheist and there's no such thing as God. There's no question about that at all. And the, again, the Buddha fixed him with a gaze and said, well, of course there's nothing but God. Everything is God. The poor man was shattered and went staggering off down the road. Well, they went further and another man was coming the other way and he too somehow was drawn to address the Buddha and he said to him, well, you know, you're obviously a wise man and I don't know whether there's a God or whether there is a God. What do you think? And the Buddha fixed him with a piercing gaze and said not a word. The man was shattered and went off down the road. Well, the Buddha and Ananda continued their journey until they came to the place of rest for the evening. And after they'd had their little simple evening meal and were sitting drinking their herbal tea, Ananda said to the Buddha, Buddha Master, I'm disturbed. Today, first of all, you said there was no God. And then you said there was nothing but God. And then you remained silent. I don't understand. And the Buddha replied that the answers that were given were for those who asked the questions. But if my answers have bothered you, then that is your question. The second story was about again the Buddha who was in retreat in a mountain cave, again with his closest disciple Ananda. And uh, the Buddha was inside the cave in deep meditation and Ananda was outside stirring the rice. 
when all of a sudden Ananda saw someone coming up the path. And as they approached, he suddenly realized it was the devil Mara. Mara, that demon who had danced in front of the Buddha when he was sitting under the Bodhi tree and been vanquished by the Buddha's presence. Well, Ananda was horrified. What was he doing coming to see the Buddha? So by the time Mara arrived in front of Ananda, Ananda was kind of ready and he wasn't very polite in his greeting. He said, what are you doing here? You know the Buddha vanquished you years ago. You're his enemy. And the Mara had a an enigmatic smile on his face and he said, uh, do you mean to say that the Buddha has told you that he has enemies? Well, of course, the Buddha never had, so Ananda was a little bit uh, chastened by this and so what could he do? All he could do was go in and announce Mara's presence to his master, which he did and immediately the Buddha got up out of his meditation pose and came out of the front of the cave and embraced the Mara. Oh, my old friend, it's so good to see you. I haven't seen you for so long. Come in, come in, come in. Well, Ananda was absolutely horrified. Horrified. But what could he do? So the Buddha and the Mara were sitting there and the Buddha asked Ananda to make them herbal tea well. Ananda was grinding his teeth, you know, he didn't mind making tea for his master, but to make tea for the devil? Well, anyway, he had to comply with the Buddha's wishes, so he made tea, served tea, but he was listening all the time to what the Buddha and Mara were saying while he was preparing it, and um, he could hear the conversation going on with him, and the Mara was saying to the Buddha, I'm tired of being the Mara. I've got to have a sneer on my face all the time. I've got to talk in riddles. And I've got to look evil. And he said, even all of my followers now, they're talking about equality. They're talking about saving the trees and the earth. And he said, I feel like giving them all over to you. Well, said the Buddha, you think you've got problems. He said, look at my followers. He said, they make images of me and they they take my words and cast them in stone and then they reinterpret them a thousand times. And well, this conversation went on between the Mara and the Buddha and, and Ananda listening to the conversation was getting more and more worried. He thought, oh no, surely the Buddha is not going to become the Mara and the Mara is not going to become the Buddha. Oh no. But anyway, the conversation went on between them and after uh, some time the Mara got up and the Buddha embraced him closely and said, keep in touch, let me know what's going on with you. And, and off he went. So these two old stories raise the questions for us in this first story, what does it indicate for us that we now find absent in our life? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. In a word, what would you call it? In a word. What's absent in your life now? Like that doubt or that going back and forward. Have a look, what was what was your foundation before? What were you standing on? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Truth? Belief? Yeah. Ideas. Ideas? You know, it's either a god or there isn't, but whichever way, like it becomes a foundation for you to for your mind to operate from. That's right. Framework. Yes. Good and bad. Good and bad, yes. So we, we find ourselves in this place with nothing to stand on, isn't it so? No, no truth to rest on. Nothing to rest on, in fact. That's scary as all hell, isn't it? 
Anyway, we won't go there until another time. But what about this second story about the Mara and the Buddha? What does this indicate in something that was there before in our life? It's not there anymore. <coughs> Judgment. Judgment. When does it come down to good and bad? Good and bad? Good and evil? So not only do we have nothing to stand on insofar as a belief or a truth, we're in this place where we shake our heads and you know, even when we have others uh, pining about this or that or the other, you, you somehow can't go there, can you? You can't buy into it. So where are we? That's the question. Where are we then? Okay, it's a state of such it and under. That's obvious. We know very clearly that there's no dividing line between the dimensions of existence for us, movement. And we are living in a state of intense presence. Isn't it so? Don't you find the intensity of your life now so poignant, so present, so there in your face, whatever it is? Sometimes you feel like you can't contain it, isn't it? Yes. And sometimes it evokes these words, yes or no. But whatever the words are, there's no thought about them. You say, there's no God or there is a God. There's the same intensity in it. And it's shattering. But where are we? That's the question asked. So maybe I can drop the question now. I'll tell you next week. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>